Welcome everybody to this week's Dissecting Design. As the big old letters at the top indicate, our game this week is going to be Fear. This is a very interesting shooter, released in 2005 by Monolith. At the time, it was considered to be the highest point of first-person shooter gameplay. Came coming out after the release of, of course, Half-Life 2, and long before Doom would recapture its crown in 2016. Monolith, or I'm sorry, Fear is a great example of a game that's it's designed around doing one thing, but it does it really well, and that is the combat. And that does come back to hurt it, and we'll talk about that later on in this video. But let's load things up and we'll talk about the story and basic gameplay. Alright, welcome back. So we're in the second level of the game starting out to discuss some of the basics. <laughs> so the story is we are part of Fear, a military group put together to handle paranormal, invest paranormal events. And we're in search of a madman with an army of replicant soldiers whose job it is to basically he's trying to do something evil and all the while there's also the additional situation of the fact that there's a ghost of a little girl who's out to get us now with this game the idea is we're trying to combine both horror and action together to create a unique set and this is kind of what monolith did with future games like the condemned series now, for this starting point, we're playing as the Point Man. Basically, that's our uh, mock here for the rest of this game. What well, the idea is, are we? the reason we're on this team is that we, for some reason that's never really explained, we have bullet time. Or slow-mo, as it's called in this one. As I said in the last part, Fear is a game that's built on doing one thing, and that is the combat. And something tells me we're going to be seeing that in the next few minutes. While they go in there. Of course, something bad is sure to happen. We also have the world's greatest jump kick. <laughs> uh -oh. Doesn't look good. Well, that's not right. And the game likes to cut to strange situations and paranormal events. Dealing with this little girl, as you saw, named Alma. Oh, that's not good. Alma plays a much greater role in games 2 and 3 of Fear, which is kind of one of the problems. But again, we'll come back to that later. Oh. Well, we found their team, but that's not good. Uh -oh. Lights flickering, that's never a good sign, right folks? And that was our first of many replicant enemies. Oh, ow! And as you can see, they do not play around in this game. And that's one of the major parts about Fear that made may, may it stand out from other FPSs at the time and arguably to this day. Most enemies in a first person shooter are very basic in terms of their AI. They may chase you. Anyway, watch this. Super kick. And they may just stay in one spot and hide. In Fear, the enemies will actively engage you. Which means they will chase you down. Look at that, he tried to play dead. There we go. Throw grenades to flush you out. And do anything they can to basically get you. I'm also playing this on the harder difficulty settings to show off kind of the difference in the AI. Uh -oh. Gotta get my slow-mo ready here. And this is one of those games where leaning is a very practical solution or a practical strategy. And so it's just jump kicking people. So let's.
let's see, when's our next group gonna come? Got my flashlight. There we go. I'm sure that's all the damage we're gonna take, right? Can I break this? Don't wanna waste the ammo. Like that. We should be getting another checkpoint soon. And we'll also try and make use of our slow-mo power. Anybody here? Let's see. Oh, my mistake, I jumped down one too early. For speedrunners, I know that jump kick is their bread and butter. But, fear is designed around basically altering between scenes of combat and those of action. So right now we're in the action segments, but then they slow down for the horror. Good, we have a checkpoint. There you are. Matrix kick. I'll do some slow mo here. There we go. Now the thing about your slow mo is that it recovers. That's the bar at the bottom. So you're never really penalized for using it as long as you can deal with the threats. Oh. But yeah, you're you really do have to pay attention in this game. That. He was trying to ambush me from behind. And ragdolls. Lots and lots of ragdolls. You hear? Hello? And again, they do a lot of damage if you're not paying attention. Time powers go. <laughs> and we can also zoom in. But yeah, there is no reason not to do slow mo. Not only does it look badass, but we'll save you. Let's see, anybody else here need to die? Well, like I said, the enemy does not play around in fear. Not only do they do a lot of damage to you, but by the fact they're actually going to do whatever they can to get to you, means you have to be really careful. Especially if you're not speedrunning this. And Monolith, who would go on to make Condemn, really shows their love of office complexes and warehouses. Uh-oh. Dun -dun. I think we're in the spooky part now. Oh, no, never mind. Matrix power. <laughs> The gunplay in Fear is quite good, despite the little over cumbersome of the controls. I mean, look at that. You see that dodge roll that guy did? Or that dive roll? Again, in most first person shooters, enemies don't do that. They will run out through doors, and they'll just charge at you and attempt to kill you. But you rarely see enemies trying to outthink and outflank the player. I will take some grenades. Grenades and slow-mo, folks. The best combination. Let's see. Anybody in here? Hello? Oh. Great bricks. 
<laughs> and I'm not playing this on the highest setting either. Because I figure I would die in like one second on that level. Ooh, hello. Oh, and look at that, he actually saw my flashlight. Oh, now you can see my gun. Uh oh. Some of them just blew up, and I don't know what it was. Take that, glass. How do I get through there? Is it is it time for a... a oops. Not to jump kick the wall, folks. That, that doesn't do anything. Huh. I'll probably have to go around the other way. But again, this is one of the things that... Monolith will capitalize on later. That I know they're out to get me. I just don't know where they are. They could be around any corner. They could come after me. But generally speaking, I am not safe. Got some ammo. I don't know that guy had a dictionary. I used one of my first aid kits. Anybody here? Again, gotta be really careful. And yeah, we only need to listen to messages. Surely this won't go badly for me, right? Gotta use cover wherever you can get it. <laughs> Sucks to be you. And like I said, getting caught out of position in fear, you're going to get killed almost immediately. And this is why slow mo is your saving grace. Hmm. Hmm, armor. I'll take all that good stuff. Anybody. Oh, if you heard that, you can hear them actually talking. Where are you? There they are. Do, 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 do. Peekaboo. Are you still alive? Yeah, if you don't get headshots or melee kills, these guys are just durable in this. I think I got them all. I almost got them with that grenade, too. That's gonna bug me. But yeah. Jump kicks and melee attacks are your saving grace. As long as you get close enough to the guy. Let's see, anything else around here that I could use? Oh, we got a new gun. Let's see. Anybody over here? Yeah, this looks bad. I think he's dead. Hello. I see your feet, buddy. I don't know if I hit him. Whoa. Well, 
like I just said, look at them. They're actually trying to sneak up on me. Oh my god, you're not dead. Is that all of them? Yes, no, maybe so? But the thing about fear is that the environments are very generic, but it leads to some very emergent firefights due to the lethality of the enemies. There's our checkpoint. Is there anything over here I can use? The only real collectibles you'll find, I believe, are the reflex boosters that boost your slow-mo. I don't remember if their health upgrades are not in this. Let's see. Ooh, I'll take a gun. Uh oh. Ooh. Nope. That's the guy we're chasing who's running this uh, replicant army. So I think we're officially in spooky time. That's nothing. Hello, boy. Dun -dun. And this is meant to break up the gunplay of fear. No. I want to do my kicks. That's not good. But this is a game that makes you work for your wins. I believe we should be coming to the end of this level. Oh! Dun dun. Oh, that's a screenshot right there. I should probably run, right? We don't want Devil Ghost Girl to come after me. Oh, we. <laughs> and that was the second level of fear. But I'm going to cut things here. We'll be back on the next level once it's done loading. And we'll talk a little bit about how the gameplay gro goes on and grows next. Alright, welcome back. We're on the next level. I did find a health upgrade, so I was wrong on that front. And we're going to show a little bit more of the gunplay of fear. As you can hear, there's some enemies right behind this door. Let's see, where are they? I'm going to try a grenade again. Come on. Alright, that was the most practical way. I just had to do that. more. And they could be anywhere. And that's the thing about Fear's gunplay. While it doesn't have the same visual or auditorial excitement as games like Stalker, it's how you're interacting and dealing with the enemies that really elevate it compared to other FPSs. Oh, I see someone. Who's trying to throw a grenade? Oh, you got off. Again, they will act dynamically to fight you. You never know what they're going to do, when they're going to run to, or whatever tactics they will try to get you. Got better weapons so I better switch to it. Now, what's very interesting about fear is that despite the whole paranormal focus, the majority of the enemies you're going to be fighting are humanoid base. There are a few mechs as mini boss fights. Let's break through there. But again, you're just going to be mainly fighting enemies who have similar abilities than you, of you, and not counting, of course, slow mo power. Let's see what we got. There we go. So we can get the drop on them. 
salir. Uh, I got a feeling there's trouble around. Mm -mm. I hear him. He's fine. <laughs> It'd be sometimes hard to make them out there. But as you can see again, they're just very reactive. I think there's more of them around. Better pick up that ammo. You can only hold, I believe, four weapons. So there is strategy in terms of which ones you want to hold on to, such as the shotgun and some of the game's crazier weapons. I'm pretty sure they reuse these models for Condemned. <laughs> but, again, the environments themselves are just very generic. Which is, I think, one of the game's weaknesses. Let's see. Uh oh. Anybody else alive? Nope. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm making this look easier or not, but like I said, these enemies are not your basic grunts that you see in other FPSs. It's also good I'm picking up a lot of first aid kits. I forgot. I should have to climb up. Let's see what else we got here. But that's the thing about fear. It's not really about anything else other than the gunfights. There are some slight, I guess, areas of puzzle solving in terms of how to get around. But again, this is a game that's built on just making the player fight enemies and make it interesting. We don't need that. Where is everybody? I'll take that. Nope, oh, that's not right. And because they're so generic, it's very easy, I think, to get a loss here. Just go from one hallway to the next. Alright, this looks like it's going to be another shootout. <laughs> All right, you're out. But yeah, you do not want to be staying right in one spot here. Me again, is he? Ooh. But again, the enemies do not make it easy for you, and that's really good. Wait, is there someone else around? Soda's not gonna help me. And the real bulk of fear takes place in one office complex. Which I just wonder if that was an excuse just to keep these environments as generic as possible. Uh oh. That's our spooky indicator there. So I think we're done with combat. And it's time for a little bit more in terms of trying to scare you. But again, it, it's kind of a very weird thing with fear. 
They want you to get scared during these sections, but then you spend a lot of your time in slow-mo badass mode. Let's see what we got here. Surely nothing will try and kill me here. <laughs> yeah, this is normal, right? But this is definitely like Mongol's attempt again to try and combine storytelling oh, with their action. Oh, and that was the end of the interval. But as you can see there, there's different moves at the bottom. <laughs> I love the bicycle kick though. And the armor cam, armor cam is where the game primarily takes place in. But I want to go back to the main menu because I want to talk about some of the issues the Fear series had. But let's see if we can do any more killing before that. Anybody here we need to kill quickly? There we go. And I hope you like industrial complex in your first person shooters. There we go, slide. Okay, can we get the drop on him? <laughs> there we go. Perfect. I'll take that. I want to do a sly kick on someone really bad, but I don't know where I get the opportunity for that. <laughs> but I'm curious what you guys think of the graphics, especially for those of you who played it at launch, because the game was heralded as having really amazing graphics, but again, the environments are just so generic. Let's see, can we get a slide kick? Just one. That's all I ask. Alright, let's see. We got one, two. Uh oh. Nice hit. Pretty sure there's someone around. Nice. Are there any more? Oh. oh I see him. <laughs> I'll make sure. Oh. Do it quickly. Uh oh. I don't even know how that guy got behind me either. Well, like I said, these enemies are no slouches when it comes to getting around to get you. And that represents the best parts of fear. But I think after that last display of bloodshed, we're going back to the main menu. I want to talk about some of the issues that I have with the game. And then we'll probably wrap it up, because again, this is a game that's built on doing one thing, and doing that very well. Alright, Fear is a game that kind of shows just how far you can take a single mechanic. And while the basic gameplay is amazing, it runs again into the issue of sustaining it. Especially over two, or in this case, three games. What we saw is basically all you're doing in the game. Yes, they throw in new guns, and you know the environments maybe have a different wall texture, but it's not changing the gameplay. And this is one of the things I think that hurt Fear compared to Half-Life, who built each one of their sections as its own unique situation. 
So you never really got tired of playing Half-Life because you were never sure what was going to come next. In Fear, it's gunfights that lead to more gunfights that lead to more gunfights, and then the spot by Alma. And I'm not honestly sure Monolith had plans to do a whole series on Fear. Even though the game ends with a uh, to be continued or a little hook, the second and third games fall into that classic horror trope of trying to overly explain everything. The second game, we're supposedly playing as someone... Oh, I'm sorry, in this one, we learn that we are the one of the children of Alma. In the second game, we play as someone who Alma basically rapes in order to produce a child, who I think we then play in the third game. And the story just gets more and more absurd. In Dread... As an interesting point, they start throwing in more horror and supernatural elements in the later games. But I don't believe Monolith worked on the third game. I'm not so sure about the second one off the top of my head. Maybe I'll check that out after we're done here. But the issue that Fear has is that it just really can't sustain itself no matter how great the basic gameplay is. And I'm wondering for you watching this. What did you think? Did you stay invested in this game from beginning to end? Or did it start to wear thin? Because all they can really do is throw new weapons at you. While there are a few mini boss fights, again, that's not really the point of playing this game. It's kicking guys like what you saw right there. And the expansions and again the sequels just don't really do much. The third game tries to throw in this whole co-op style and you know choose who you play with to determine the story, but again it just doesn't really do all that much. But I think with that we'll wrap things up for our talking about fear. Again, it's a game that I really like and it came out at that perfect time when there weren't really a lot of standout first person shooters on the market unless you, if you don't count Half-Life of course. And Monolith did make several other great FPS's that try to do things differently. Maybe at some point we'll look at Tron 2.0 in a future dissecting design. Or maybe we go back to Condemned as well. But it seems like Monolith has this thing that they make like one really great game and then the sequel just doesn't seem to turn out as well as it should. But again, with that said, thank you so much for watching this week's Dissecting Design. Hope you're enjoying these lovely action shots. If you'd like to suggest a game for me to look at in a future video, please let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, check back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom where we examine the art and science of games with more Dissecting Design pieces coming up each Monday. But until then, have a great day. Before we get to the credits, just wanted to give a quick thank you and shout out to the supporters over on patreon.com slash gwbicer. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check back around 10 Eastern for regular streaming. If you like to suggest games for me to cover or topics to talk about, let me know in the comments below. For a collection of my writings, as well as weekly podcasts on design, check out Game-Wisdom.com. To support the Game Wisdom Patreon, you can find us on there on Patreon.com slash GWBicer. A dollar will get you into our private Discord channel where we talk game topics and more. Five dollars will get you voting privileges for any major event, including the Saturday Night Grab Bag, Patreon-funded goals, and more. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoy more videos here on the Game Wisdom YouTube channel.